Listen at the close of this program for an important announcement regarding a time change. Have you heard the strange tales of the Whistler? I'm the Whistler. I didn't see the man, I swear I didn't. He just appeared out of nowhere, I didn't see a thing. I only heard that awful bump when the car hit him. It was an accident, I tell you. Friday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, The Whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the odd story... Of Blind Alley. Young Henry Carteret III and his widowed mother live with Henry's paternal grandfather. Grandfather Carteret is immensely wealthy and lives on a vast estate in the suburbs. Young Henry, after graduation, seemed to follow in the footsteps of his late father. He's a weak sort and quite the playboy of the city, gambling and drinking. So grandfather, though inclined to be generous, finds it necessary to cut down on Henry's allowance. But, Grandfather, I can't get along now. I can hardly make ends meet. But well, it's embarrassing. Embarrassing? Yeah. For a whole year now, all you've done is gad about all night and drink and gamble. Well, I've paid all the debts I'm going to. Well, what can I do on $100 a when week? When I was your age, I got along on $10 a week. But times have changed since you were a boy. You're well, just like your father. Physical wreck and in his grave before he was 35. Oh, well, he did everything to accept. He was my son. I know what he did. Started out just like you. But each day he got a little worse. He was smart, too. He knew just when to slow down. I know how to handle myself. You got nothing around you but a bunch of leeches. Oh, you're just soured on everything and everybody. Some of your friends you've had around here would sicken anybody with horse sense. And you refuse to give me an extra hundred dollars tonight? I won't give you ten cents. I'd rather die before I'm forty than be like you. You keep on the way you are, and you'll get your wish. Can I have fifty dollars? If you say another word, I'll stop your allowance completely, do you hear? What is it, Henry? What's wrong, darling? Oh, nothing, Mother, nothing at all. Grandfather's on one of his economy rampages. Oh, but darling, your grandfather is right. You're only harming yourself. Well, what good is money if you can't use it? Depends on how you use it. Oh, he couldn't spend his money in the next 50 years if he tried. No, but you certainly could. Well, what are you going to do with it? Leave it to you, providing you get some sense in your head. If you don't, I'll leave it to a home for indigent cats. (laughs) What you need is a good solid jolt in the solar plexus, and that's just what you're heading for. Please, Henry, run along. I, I can't stand any more of this. Twenty bucks. I can't even take a girl to dinner. Oh, no, not the kind you know. Please go, All Henry. right, Mother. And if I get lost in the big city, I promise I'll go to the big policeman and tell him who I am. Oh, if he only knew what I went through with his father. Yeah, I know, Mary. Some fellows just have to be beaten over the head with a club before they wake up. Well... I'll do my best, Mary. For several weeks, Henry has been making the rounds of the nightclubs and gambling places with his latest girlfriend, Nella Goodwin of the Boston Goodwin. Nella and her brother, Jerry, have been vacationing in the vicinity. The three of them have made the rounds and have dropped into Nella's apartment for a nightcap. Well, I certainly had a wonderful time tonight, Henry. Did you, Nella? Well, so did I. But I was so sure I'd clean up on that roulette wheel. You can't win all the time. Here. Here's your drink. Thanks. Let's see. How much did I borrow from you, Jerry? Oh, just a hundred. Mm, no, I'll let you have it in a couple of days. No hurry. You really think you should drink any more tonight, Henry? Why not have some coffee? Coffee? <laughs> Perish the thought of once coffee. How far do you have to drive? 20 miles, isn't it? Oh, he'll be all right when he gets out in the air. Oh, I don't know, Jerry. It isn't safe. I, I wouldn't want you to get into trouble, Henry. Please drink some coffee. Please. Oh, darling, don't worry. I've driven that strip along the coast a hundred times. Yes, but you've drunk more than usual tonight. Maybe. I wouldn't be able to sleep a wind. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll phone you when I get home. Why not stay in town tonight? Nella, why don't you let him alone? He'll be all right. Uh, Henry, let Jerry and me drive you home in our car. How about it, Jerry? Whatever you say. No, no, no. I'll tell you what. I got a better idea. 
You two get your things and drive home with me and stay over the weekend. The weekend? Sure, stay as long as you like. It's a regular resort. Lots of things to do. Plenty of fun. <laughs> you come with me, and if you're afraid of my driving, then you can drive. Fair enough? Okay. Now, how about it, Nora? Well, well, if Henry insists on driving home tonight, I'd rather see that he gets there. Great, that's wonderful. Go on and get your things, and let's be on our way. Well, how am I doing? Satisfactory, am I? Well, I'd feel better if you'd slow down a bit. It's beginning to mist. Better take it easy, Henry. Okay, okay. Does that suit you? Take us about an hour or more, won't it? <laughs> this nail's paid. Why not let me drive? No, I'm all right. I feel swell. Let Jerry drive. No, no, no. Clear sailing from here on. I like me a cigarette, Nella. My case is in my right pocket. Here. All right. There. Cigarette, Jerry? Yeah, thanks. Henry, look out! Uh... What was it? We hit something. Yes. Yes, it was a man. Uh, a man? Oh, good Lord. Yes, there he is at the edge of the road. Oh, Henry. I see him. Stay in the car. I'll have a look. Is he, is he all right, Jerry? In just a second. Jerry. Not a sign of a pulse. He's, uh, he's dead? Oh, but I wasn't going fast. I couldn't have hit him very hard. I know, but he's an elderly guy. Oh, Jerry, what do we do? We've got to do something. Yeah, but hey, there's a car coming. Way back there, look. We've got to get out of here. They'll smell liquor if they stop, and Henry's driving, and he's tight. What do we do? Look, it's a red light. Police. We've got to get that body off the road. They'll see it and chase us. Get out, Henry. I'll jerk a wire loose on the distributor. They're having trouble, see? Take it easy and don't get excited. I'll carry this guy over behind that big sign. When you find the trouble, the two of you drive on. I'll meet you back at the apartment. I'll get there as soon as I can. Here they come. Don't be nervous, Henry. I feel kind of sick now. What's the trouble here? Why, I don't know. Motor just cut out on me. Yeah? Battery's all right. It's got light. Let's have a look. Uh-huh. The wire's... Now, wait a minute. Here it is, I think. That wire was loose on top of the distributor. All right, try it now. There you are. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much, officer. Out kind of late, aren't you? 1.30? Why, I'm on my way home. Yeah? Is your car? Yes. Henry Carteret III. You young Carteret? Let's see your operator's life. Thanks. You've been, uh... Drinking a bit, haven't you, Carter? Well, yes, but I'm a careful driver. What's your name, miss? What? Uh, Nella Goodwin. You drive? Oh, yes. Then you better slip over here and drive this car. Now, good night, Carter. Take it easy, miss. Yes, officer. Thank you. It was young Carter. Had a loose wire. Let's get going, Joe. few minutes, the police car passes them. Nella leaves the highway, cuts over to the boulevard, and heads back to town. In Nella's apartment, they wait for Jerry. Three hours pass, and finally, Jerry walks in. Jerry, where on earth have you been? We thought you'd never get here. I stayed behind that big sign for over an hour. Every time I started out, a car came along. Finally, I made it over to the boulevard. I couldn't find a cab, so I walked back down the side street. Didn't want anybody to see me like this. Where did you get all that mud on you? What did you do with it? No, don't worry. Everything's all right. What did you do with, with the body? I buried it back of the sign. I found a small board. The dirt is soft and the brush is thick. No one will ever find him. Buried him? Sure. If we reported it now or anyone found him on the road, those cops would be after Henry in a second. Who was the man? Well, he didn't have anything on him. Only a few cents in his pocket and no identification. I gather from his appearance and his clothes that he was just a trenchant, a hobo. Probably stepped out in front of us to bum a ride. Was he an old man? I'd say about 50 or more. Oh, it's awful. I didn't see him. He just seemed to come out of nowhere. I didn't see a thing. I only heard that thump when the car hit him. It was an accident, Henry. We know that. It was a lucky thing for you. I got him off the road. Those cops had found him, and with you drinking, well, you'd get stuck for manslaughter. 
I'm mighty lucky I was alone. Yes, I know. I, I appreciate it. You Julie. don't think we should have reported it? Would you like to see Henry sentenced to prison for accidentally running into some old bum? Oh, no, no, Jerry, but oh, I was afraid of something like this. That's why I didn't want him to drive. I'm sorry, Nell. I should have listened to you. Oh, what a mess. It's terrible. Will you relax? Well, you're sure they won't find him? When they do, they'll have forgotten about you being stalled there. Oh, by the way, uh, just where was that? Well, it, it's practically at the intersection of Ocean Drive and Valley Boulevard. It was in front of that big billboard, that red sign. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's forget about it. It's done, and the less said about it, the better. Better have a drink, Henry, and as soon as I change my clothes, we'll go on to your place. Who are you spoiling that weekend? I don't want a drink. Okay. I'll be ready in a few minutes. All the rest of the night and morning, Henry is shaken. He cannot close his eyes. And finally, he musters sufficient strength to dress. Downstairs, his grandfather is talking to Jerry and Nella. And what did you say your name was? Goodwin. Gerald Goodwin. The Boston Goodwins, you know. The Boston Goodwins? This is my sister, Nella. I see. Came down with Henry, eh? And what time did you get here? Well, it was late. That is, early this morning. It was about six, to be exact. Six? Yeah. Don't you people ever sleep? Oh, certainly we sleep. But, well, youth doesn't require the amount of sleep that age needs. And what are you doing here? Uh, Henry invited us to spend a week or so with him. Oh, is that so? Mm -hmm. Well, that's mighty decent of him. Henry's a wonderful boy. He really is, Mr. Carteret. All depends on how you look at it. You should think a lot of Henry. I do. Believe me, I think constantly. Uh, good morning. I, uh, well, I... I don't think I know these people. Uh, or do I? No, you don't, Mary. But you will, you will... Henry's guest came in at six this morning, here for a bit of a stay from Boston. Jerry Goodwin and his sister, Nella Goodwin, of the Boston Goodwins. This is Henry's mother. How do you do, Mrs. Carteret? Well, uh, you're quite welcome. We really didn't want to impose on you, but Henry was so insistent that... Well, we really came because... Because Henry wouldn't take no for an answer. And where is Henry? Well, I don't think Henry is feeling well this morning. You mean... Henry had been drinking? Well, yes, a little. Oh. As a matter of fact, that's why we came with him. I was afraid for him to drive home last night. She's exaggerating, Mrs. Carter. Tell me, how long have you known Henry, Miss Goodwin? About three weeks. Going on four. Are you the one who's been taking to dinners and nightclubs? Well, yes, I've seen him nearly every evening. Oh, I see. Oh, good morning, Mother. Morning, everybody. Well, I see you've all gotten acquainted. Henry, why... Why, you're pale as a sheet. I've never seen you like this. I'm quite all right, Mother. I'd have sworn it was your father coming down those steps. Hold your hands out. Oh, look at that. The jitters. Oh, you're doing all right, boy. Don't you worry about being a sour old tight. Oh, shut up. Shut up and let me alone, will Henry, you? Henry, what is it? What's wrong There's with you? There's nothing wrong. He'll be all right. He had a very bad night, didn't you, Henry? <laughs> Jerry. Well, first he lost too much, then he drank too much to cover up the losses. I'll pay you the hundred. Oh, don't be silly. I'm not worried. I'm only kidding. Come on, let's have some breakfast and forget about it. Come on, everybody. Oh, pardon me. Would I be intruding? I haven't had breakfast yet. Do you mind? Why, certainly not. Come along. <laughs> Before the day is over, Grandfather is boiling. He can't stand the impudence of Jerry. But Henry is still unable to control his nerves. He can't get the highway accident off his mind. And Jerry becomes bolder and bolder. Jerry has the upper hand now. And Henry realizes he is completely at the mercy of Nella's brother. But you've got to get hold of yourself, Henry. You've got I to. I can't. I can't get it off my mind. Oh, calm down and quit prancing about. What good does it do? Besides, you've nothing to worry about. No one knows but the three of us. But the police didn't see you there. That's right. Just you and Nella. And obviously, you were driving. What are you talking about, Jerry? You don't have a thing to worry about from me, Henry. Not a thing. I'm perfectly satisfied with things the way they are. Of course, I may ask a little favor of you now and then, but it's nothing to worry about. Favor? What do you mean? Why don't you forget about it now? You'll drive yourself crazy. What do you mean by favors? Forget about it. Just forget I mentioned it. I wouldn't dream of saying anything about what happened last night to your grandfather or your mother. What kind of a rat do you think I am? Well, that'd be terrible. Family name like yours, well, they, they wouldn't be able to stand such a thing. Oh, no, Henry, you've nothing to worry about. No. Uh, Jerry hasn't made himself clear. He, he's trying to tell you that he wants to help you. Aren't you, Jerry? Well, certainly. What else? 
Well, what on earth? Oh. <laughs> I get it now. Henry thought that... Oh, for the love of Mike, pull yourself together, Henry. Don't be so ridiculous. Well, I'll run along. Maybe if I take some tablets, I'll be able to sleep. Jerry, you're at it again. Now, please get out of here and leave these poor people alone. Poor people? I like Henry. I'm crazy about him. And I want you to leave him alone. I know what you're planning. Oh, shut up. Who are you to talk? The good ones of Boston. Sure, but what have we got? Nothing. We've been living for years on our name. We winter in Florida and we summer in Maine without a dollar. Now, here we are again. Only this time it's a little better. This old grandpa is going to kick off and leave millions to Henry. And with what we know, well, we can stay here forever. I won't. You will. I like Henry too much. I love Henry. Huh? Well, I can't see a thing wrong with that. No, not a single thing. In fact, I approve. <laughs> see you later, Nella. <laughs> Henry is licked. He knows Jerry has him by the nose, but he's helpless. Completely helpless. Finally, Monday comes, and Grandfather calls Henry to the library. Did you want me, Grandfather? I certainly did. Why, what's wrong? The bank just called me and said you'd overdrawn your account $1,000. $1,000? Oh, well, I haven't. What I... did you do with the money? What? Did the bank pay it? Certainly they paid it. What did you do with that money? Well, I owed a debt. To Jerry Goodwin. I heard him say you owed him $100. Well, he was just going easy. It was really a 1000 Henry, you're lying. Do you hear me? Lying. No, I owed it to him because of, well, gambling. I don't believe you. Not this time. It's something else. I've been suspicious from the moment they walked into this house. There's something going on. That Jerry is too smart, too cocky. There's something afoot, and I want to know what There's it is. There's nothing, nothing. Please believe I me. I don't believe you. And you'll tell or get out of this house and stay out. Wait a minute, Mr. Carter. Henry will tell you. Nella, you keep out of this. Then I'll tell. If he gave that money to my brother, then I think I know why. Why? Because Jerry knows something that Henry doesn't want told. What? Keep still. Get out of here, Nella. Get out. This is blackmail. What else? Then why do you tell me this? Well, because I love Henry. With all his faults, I'm crazy about him. I know my brother, and I can guess why Henry gave him the money. I owe it to him. I owe him thousands more. Now get out of here, Nella. Henry had to pay him, Mr. Carter, and he had to. Jerry knows too much about Henry. It's blackmail. I'll call the police. No, no, please. Please don't do that, please. Well, what's going on? What's all the racket? You'll find out. Blackmail. I'll have you in jail. Oh, no, I'll tell you. I'll... I'll tell you. Jerry saved me from prison. I killed a man accidentally. Ran over him on the ocean road. What? Yes. And I was drinking. We saw a police car coming, and Jerry got the body off the road just in time. He pulled a wire in the motor, and the officers helped me fix it, and Jerry... Well, Jerry got me out of it. I see. And where did this happen? On Ocean Drive, near Valley Boulevard. I buried the body back of the big billboard. The bread sign on Ocean Drive. So you see, everything's all right. I did my best, and no one will discover the body for a long time. And there's no identification on it. Good Lord. It was an accident, Mr. Carter. It really, it was. Henry didn't see him. I swear he didn't. It, it was misting. I wanted to report it, but the police were almost there, and Henry was drinking, and, well, it, it would have meant manslaughter. I, I've never been so shocked in my life. Your mother must not know of this. I've really done you a favor, Mr. Carter. Leave me alone. All of you. I, I want to think... A death-like silence falls over the household. Very little is said until afternoon of the next day. The grandfather calls the three young people to the library. But at that very moment, a visitor is announced. The visitor steps into the library. I'm Mr. Cartwright. Did you wish to see me? Well, uh, not exactly. I want to see your grandson here. Henry Carter. Who are you? I'm Lieutenant Jones, police department. Police? Well, what can we do for you, Lieutenant? Who are these people? I, this is Mr. Goodwin and Nella Goodwin, our guest at the moment. Uh, you're Nella Goodwin? Yes. Well, I have a little report here. 
On the morning of August 17th, about 1 a.m., a patrol car came upon Henry Carteret and assisted him to get his car started. A girl with him gave her name as Nella Goodwin. It was near the intersection of Ocean Drive and Valley Boulevard. Uh, is that right? Uh, yes. Yes, I did have trouble that night. Mm-hmm. How long were you there? About uh, ten minutes, I think. I see. Uh, did you happen to notice another car leave as you pulled up, or did you see anyone else in the vicinity? Why, uh, I, I don't remember. Uh, did you, Miss Goodwin? Well, I, I can't remember, but there may have been. Uh, did either of you step off the highway during that time? No. No, that is, I, I may have, but I... I don't think we did. Mm-hmm. You uh, stopped directly in front of that big billboard, uh, the one advertising bread? Yes. What is this all about? Well, they removed that billboard and started excavating for a new project today. They discovered a body. A man about 50. Been dead several days. Apparently struck by a car. Might have internal injuries. Well, we didn't see a thing. Uh-huh. You know nothing about it, miss? No, certainly not. Uh, what's your relation to Henry Carter? At... Well, no relation. I see. Well, let me ask you to drop down to headquarters for a little talk, Miss Goodwin. Good afternoon, folks. He's wise. They're going to get Nella down there and make her talk. I won't go. You'll have to go. I won't go. I won't talk if they kill me. They know you were with Henry, and they'll hammer you until... Wait a minute. I've got it. There's one way they can't make you say a word. How's that? Nella and Henry have got to get married at once. A wife cannot be made to testify against her husband. Married? But, Jerry, he doesn't want to marry There's me. no choice. It's the only chance. Come on, let's get going. They'll be back. Grandfather, what'll I do? Figure it out yourself. This is that jolt in the middle you've had coming to you. Oh, what have I ever done to deserve this? Come on, Nella, hurry. Hurry. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? Why? Calm down, Mary. He's oh. married, and that's all there is to it. But I never heard of such a thing. What was the rush? We had to get married, Mrs. Carter, if we had to. But don't worry. I love Henry. Married? Oh, I, I think I shall say Yes, yes, yes. But I'll explain later, Mary. Pardon me. There's a Mr. Jones to see you. I knew it. They're back again. Mary, please go to your room. I'll come to you in a little while. I'll explain. Yes. Yes, Father. Oh, I've never been so shocked in all my life. Henry... Your father was bad enough, but this is beyond all sense of peace. Well, what do you want now, Lieutenant? I'd like to have a talk with Miss Goodwin down at headquarters. Oh, but that isn't possible, Lieutenant. No, Lieutenant. You see, Miss Goodwin is really Mrs. Carteret. The wife cannot be forced to testify against her husband. I see. Well, maybe that won't be necessary after all. Is this your cigarette case, Henry? I, I don't know. I don't think so. Oh? <laughs> well, this was found a few feet from the grave on the other side of the billboard. It has initials on it. H.C. Of course, we have ways of tracing the owner through the jewelry. Maybe... Maybe it belonged to the dead man. No. He's been identified as Peter Lund, a transient. And suppose you couldn't find the owner of that case. We'll find the owner. May I see the case? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Oh, rather expensive. And made... Cost about a hundred dollars, I'd say. A dead man's fingerprints weren't on it. I imagine this case is worth considerably more now than it cost originally. Prices have gone sky high. Yes, I wouldn't be surprised if a case like this wouldn't be worth, well, a pretty penny. Yes. I imagine some people would pay up in the thousands for a case like that. Did you ever hear of bribery, Mr. Carteret? No, but I have a couple of friends heading the police commission, and I've heard of shake-ups and pounding the pavement. Uh... Well, uh, uh, can I see you alone, Mr. Carteret? Yes, Lieutenant. Step into the library. Uh, look, Mr. Carteret, I know you're a big shot in this county, and, uh, <clears throat> well, uh, <clears throat> I'm only trying to do my duty. I don't want to cause you any trouble, but then at the Does same Does anyone time... uh, other than you know about this cigarette case at headquarters? No. Jones, here is $1,500 for that cigarette case. How about it? Uh, well, uh, I don't want to go back to pounding a beat. I guess you've got me. I'm stuck. Poor guy hasn't got a chance. Okay, here's the case. Here's your money. 
And I'll see about a promotion for you. I'm satisfied if I can just stay where I am. Well, I'll be running along, Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter, don't do it. Please don't. What? Don't do what? Henry didn't leave the pavement that night. I swear he didn't. Someone planted that cigarette case there. I know who did it, and I know why. Are you crazy? You had the case last, Jerry. Henry did hit the man. It was an accident, but you carried the body behind the sign and buried it. You put the case there purposely. Shut up. I'm sick and tired of living by your rotten schemes. From hand to mouth on other people for years. Blackmail, extortion, anything you could think of. But I'm through with you. Brother or no brother. You're a fool, Nella. You've just sentenced Henry to the penitentiary. All three of us. Then we'll all three go to prison. I don't care. Please, Nella, please. Henry, you're a weak-kneed jellyfish. If you had any gumption, you'd poke him in the jaw. You know he's a crook. Shut up. And there's something phony about that cigarette case. I don't know what it is, but... Well, if you planted it there, you were stupid. And if you dropped it, you're stupider still. And I don't think you did either. Will you shut up? Wait a minute. Wait, if that cigarette case was there when they tore the sign down... Why didn't Lieutenant Jones mention it when he first came here? Well, we didn't find it till the next day. Lieutenant Jones, that cigarette case was never near that sign. My brother gave you that case. You're in with him on this. More blackmail. Good girl, good girl. You're wonderful, marvelous, cooking with gas. She's crazy. Come in, Captain Gibson. Yes, step in here, please. Hey, did you hear this? Did you hear what they said, Captain? I heard, and so did the sergeant. Then take them away. Take both of them away and put them on the first train out of town. Let them keep the money. But put them on the first train. I'll prefer no charges, providing they get out of town and stay out. Grandfather, I don't understand. Sir Jones isn't a police lieutenant. And there's no body buried back of that billboard. I suddenly remembered that whole block belonged to me. I hadn't sold it. So why would they be excavating? No body? I checked with Captain Gibson here. And there was no Lieutenant Jones. There was not even a trace of a grave back of that sign. Well, then, what became of the man I hit? I'll explain that in just a minute, son. Just a minute. And uh, what about the girl, Mr. Carter? Nella, my granddaughter. She's the first bit of red blood we've had in this family for years. Now, put that phony Lieutenant Jones and Jerry in the cooler for 24 hours. Then put them on trains going in different directions. If they come back in less than 10 years, they're crazy. Yes, sir. I'll show them how to monkey with the president of the police commission. <laughs> Well, there's very little to explain this time. Jerry Goodwin discovered the man was not dead the moment he felt his pulse. And when he regained consciousness back of the big billboard, well, Jerry took him across town to a hotel. Later, he arranged with him to pose as a detective and frighten Henry and Nella into marriage. And the supposed victim and Jerry would carry on a lucrative blackmail scheme from then on. But they never dreamed that the grandfather owned the lot where the corpse was supposed to have been buried. And that was where they slipped. But grandfather is proud of his spunky granddaughter-in-law. And Henry will be a good boy from now on. CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed by Wilbur Hatch and conducted by Ivan Dittmars. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Beginning Sunday, October 3rd, The Whistler will come to you at 10.15 p.m. Sunday, October 3rd, at 10.15 p.m. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.